Here in Conway versus Linus Udofia, 12 rounds in the middleweight division, 160 pounds. This is on the undercard of Lee Wood versus Josh Warrington. Let's get into it. Let's start with Kieran Conway. 18 wins, three losses, one draw, four wins by way of knockout. Let's touch on Conway's timeline just a little bit real quick. Going back to his first loss back in 2019 when he fought uh, Derek Osaze, which was three rounds in a tournament style type of fight, three rounds really isn't a whole lot. I mean, if you down early, it's tough to come back. You know what I'm saying? But he loses that fight. Two fights later, he steps into the ring the same year to fight Ted Cheeseman in a fight that had people saying Cheeseman won the fight or Conway won that fight. Close fight. I thought it was a close fight and you can make an argument for either man winning depending on what you were looking for, what you favored most. Obviously, you know, in boxing, when the judges, when you leave it to the judges, you're just not sure what you are going to get, especially if it is a close fight. But I thought he was boxing well on the outside, right? Conway doesn't have a crazy amount of power in his shots, but he's rangy and he's crafty and he can box, right? Use his jab well in that fight and he's got good hand speed and you know, I'd say he's got a pretty good chin as well. His second loss came from when he fought Suleiman Sosesco. Conway was physically bigger than Sosesco, yes, and he was using that to his advantage in spurts. Not a whole lot, not as much as I thought that he should and probably we expected him to Sosesco is athletic, sharp with his jab, very technically sound, and will keep you at distance while doing that. And he's not the most aggressive guy, though. Sosesco is not the most aggressive fighter like that. His style, his mannerisms, he's a guy that's trying to come in box, right? He's trying to stay on the outside. Kind of reminds me of that amateur style type of fighting, right? Where is he going to be on the outside, push the jab through? The shots, when it hits, the refs are going to see it. Point style right? And it's not always the most aggressive and doesn't always transfer to the professional setting. Suleiman has had success in the professional, but when you're fighting someone whose style isn't aggressive and you're the bigger man, I felt like Conway should have taken advantage of that and he did not do that to the full extent throughout the fight. He tried to close the gap, but Sosesco again kept his range, used his jab, changing angle, stepping aside. Conway just wasn't able to get busy, right? But you know, sometimes in boxing, there's always drama and one punch could change the trajectory of the fight. One punch can change everything. In the ninth round of their fight, Conway needed a knockout to win at that point. Conway landed an uppercut that hit Sosesco in the eye and he kind of just turned around and just like fell down. I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, dude, like, yo, you're ahead on the cards here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't give up this fight. You have to get up. It was a long count, but he got up. Now, when you have your opponents hurt, you got to jump on them, right? And he wasn't able to seize that opportunity. He wasn't able to close out the show. And Sesco bounced back the next round. And ultimately, Conway did lose the fight. He had a nice bounce back win, big domestic win against James Metcalf, who, I mean, he boxed very nicely in that fight. And you could see the size difference between the two as they got into the ring. After that, he fought Ammo Williams, his second most recent fight. And I thought Conway did a good job of trying to keep the distance and keep the range of the more athletic, stronger, bigger puncher, but he didn't let his hands go enough. He was slipping some of Emma Williams' shots, but he wasn't throwing enough to get the judge's eyes. Whereas Williams, who I thought looked a little flat, a little sloppy at times, a little overconfident at times, when he was let, when his shots were landing, man, Conway was feeling it. It made a sting. The judges were seeing it. Emma Williams was able to push that uppercut through and caught Conway on the chin and he fell to the canvas. After that, it was a close fight, some of those rounds, but after the knockdown, man, unless Conway was going to stop Ammo Williams, there was just no way he was going to get that win. Conway held his own, man. He's a lot tougher than he looks. Conway can box, right? But he can't fight complacent fights right? And athletic guys are going to give him a little bit of a problem. And Yudofa is an athletic guy that has good power. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, in his most recent fight, he fought uh, Jorge Silva and he won that fight on points. And we saw Silva fight Anthony Yard and we saw what Anthony Yard did to Silva. But, you know, 
Conway isn't a big of a puncher as Anthony Yard is. So it's going to be interesting to see the game plan and what he does in this fight and how he handles some of that same athleticism that Udofa has, that Amo Williams had. So we'll see. But let's talk about his opponent, Linus Udofia. 18 wins, one loss, nine wins by way of knockout. I remember when he faced his first real test back in 2007. 18? No, 19, when he fought Tyler Tyler Denny, who I think was undefeated at that time, if my memory served me correctly, right? But to that point, he wasn't fighting great opposition, right? But this was going to be a good test for him. And if he could get past Denny, it would open up some more big fights for him moving forward. And when they stepped into the ring, it took Udofia a few rounds to get going. But once he got going, you, you could see the skill set and the potential. The nice stiff jab, the combinations, you know, different level changes, using feints to set up his shots, the footwork, being able to pivot your feet, spin your opponent around, let off combinations and step back out of range, being able to take back the momentum when you're losing, when you're using it, it was a good showing of what he could do and the potential was right there. You know, he was also fighting uh, a southpaw. And so when you're fighting southpaws and you're orthodox, you know, there's certain positions you have to do and make with your feet. So one, you don't stumble upon each other. And so you're able to step ahead. You got to make adjustments in real time. There was a controversial shot in that fight that landed Udofia on the canvas. It wasn't a punishing shot by Denny by no means, but it was one of those shots where he landed a shot, but their feet were tangled. And you kind of leave it up to the judges and the ref for them to say, was it a knockdown or was it a slip? And it was ruled a slip. And Udofia came away with the win. After that fight, he stepped into the ring with John Harding Jr. and made a statement against him and he stopped him, right? I know those two were going back and forth, a lot of animosity in the face off and all the different things that those two were having outside of the ring to build up the fight, but he made a statement there and got the stoppage win. So you know he's got the momentum coming in. Then he goes into the ring to fight Denzel Bentley in a close fight where he lost by split decision. Close fight across the board. I remember the judging of that fight from the scorecards was pretty fair. I think one judge had it like 116, 112. I think another judge had it 113, 115. 114, 130, something close like that. It wasn't far off. It was a close fight. It wasn't lopsided. Depending on what you were looking for, you lean towards either guy. I thought Udafia was boxing well in the first half of the fight, but things started to shift and Bentley fought his way back into the fight. He was bringing the pressure, combinations, letting his hands go up more consistently and effectively. And I thought it also came down to that final round, man. It just seemed like Udafia stepped off the the gas a little bit stepped off the pressure a little bit and most of the judges gave the last round to bentley bentley didn't take the, he couldn't he didn't take his foot off the gas he just kept pressing and kept coming forward and the aggression started to really show who was controlling the men the momentum towards the end of the fight and most of the judges gave that round to bentley but i thought if you dofia was more aggressive good chance that fight might have ended a little bit differently or at least definitely a draw in his last fight he fought Robbie Chapman which was more of a stay busy work out the kinks tune-up type of fight it was a fight he was supposed to win I thought he looked okay you know but again it was a tune-up fight so I'm expecting this fight to be much better I'm expecting a much better version of Udofia here because he's going to have to be if he wants to beat Conway don't don't let the losses fool you Conway can come into this fight and be effective and be assertive in this fight and come out on top if Udofia is not careful so who wins I think the question for me is man which version of these guys are we going to get both men can neutralize each other a little bit if Conway can use his size to his advantage and turn up the aggression and kind of use that size and bully his way in and step out of range, right? And let his hands go consistently and let it go early. He's sometimes hesitant and waits for the perfect time to let the shots go. I know you got to set up things. You got to set things up the right way. But sometimes, man, you need to let the hands go early so you can see 
if your opponent is biting or if they are hesitant to. If Yudofia can establish the range in his jab and not be too predictable and not too cautious, that can work in his favor as well. So for me, my slight lean here leans towards Yudofia, and I think it goes decisions. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you're enjoying the content, enjoying the videos, then I hope that you consider becoming a member. I don't always get to do all the suggested videos you guys suggest in the comment section below, but if you become a member, those suggested videos rise to the top, and I will do my best to get those done for you. Or if you'd like to support the channel by way of donation, you can find options in the description below also my cash app handle will be on screen as well any amount goes towards the growth of this channel it will be greatly greatly appreciated shout out to everybody that continues to like comment share and subscribe to the channel i appreciate each of you so with all that being said if you've been watching the video this long do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time